Okay. Just keep going. Like, okay. even if we record for an hour, that's fine. We okay. can cut out anything that we think is boring afterwards. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. Watch, we'll come back and listen to it and be like, wow, that was a five minute interview. How did that happen? <laughs> Hey everyone, I got backed up on work this week, so our July giveaway will actually be announced mid next week, so make sure you pay attention on Facebook and Twitter, and you can be able to watch the video of the live drawing. And it's going to be two books this time from our former guests. We're going to have Reed Mittenbuehler's Bourbon Empire and Susan Riegler's latest release of Kentucky Bourbon Cocktails. That's all for today, so please make sure to go and support the show to be entered into our monthly giveaway. Visit us on Patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Bourbon Pursuit. Welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast. Kenny and Ryan here today, and this is going to be a new interesting show for us because we're kind of taking yet another culinary twist on bourbon. And to give you kind of a little bit of background about my family and kind of where I originated, uh, I grew up out of Columbus, Ohio when I was, I don't know, seven, eight years old and then finally moved out in Kentucky. But all my family was originally from Ohio. And so for any dessert of any tailgates or any kind of family function, the thing we always had in Ohio were Buckeyes, right? And it's, you know, they're pieces of little rolled up peanut butter and, you know, sugar dipped in chocolate. And that was kind of our thing. And then coming down to Kentucky, it was it was sort of a new realization. I think my first bourbon ball I had wasn't until probably in college. So it was a long, long time. But I know, Ryan, you know, you've Everybody knows you're from Bardstown, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so it's well, a given that we have bourbon balls at any holiday function, mostly Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah, but yeah, bourbon balls are a staple. I mean, my grandmother makes them. I mean, they're two of my favorite things: chocolate and bourbon. So, how can it go wrong? You know, she makes them. They got a strong punch. I mean, they really hit you in the face. So I, that's how I like them. Mm-hmm. Well, I think this the show's going to be pretty interesting because we're not talking about bourbon balls, right? We're talking about something that is a much more like handcrafted way to do it. And I think we're going to talk a little bit, uh, you know, our guest today is going to talk a, a much much more about a, the difference between bourbon balls and what they're producing here at the shop. And we're actually, we're sitting here today and it's it's got some pretty cool uh, ambiance. Yeah, I it. really, when I walked in, I was like, the smell was the first thing. I mean, you smell of, you know, that bourbon truffle bourbon chocolate you know it just hits your nose right away as you walk in but then you walk in it's got the decor is just incredible i mean they got all kinds of neat little uh, decanters and uh you know just we we originally thought we walked into a a, a liquor store i, know, I was right? like y'all sell booze here He's like <laughs> can i get a bottle but no it, it's it's a really cool shop and they do a great job with it cool so let's let's introduce our guest today so today we have kelly ramsey kelly is a bourbon certified chocolatier owner of art eatables here in louisville kentucky so kelly welcome to the show thank you guys for having me so we and we always ask every one of our guests this you know is there something about bourbon that attracted you to it before you started maybe cooking or experimenting with it well from uh well i was born and raised here in kentucky so it's always been around um my mom has been a huge maker's mark fan since you know she was in her 20s um and she was also a rebel yell fan which not too many people drink um and then my husband he was you know he was in a band so he was always around bourbon so i was just around it (laughs) (laughs) nice so i didn't necessarily um drink too much of it myself um that sort of came later on in life but uh but yeah so i was just always been around it and with it being in the culture as well so so tell us a little bit about how you got into doing chocolate or desserts or cooking or anything like that and what kind of made you lead up to, to building a business like this. Well, how I got started is pretty much how every chocolatier gets started is um, actually not being a chocolatier. Um, I was in finance. Uh, I did that for about 10 years and I was just looking for something more creative um, to do. And so um, anyway, I had my son, he was about, uh, he was a year old. And so we were having a plan a party. And uh, I always cooked, made candies and things like that with my mom at holidays and stuff. So I decided to make some candy chocolate favors for the guest instead of the little trinkets that you would get in all the goodie bags. And that's sort of how it started. I started making party favors as a sort of a stress reliever from my day job. Did your mom, was she, did she, so she got you involved or started with that? Yeah, for the holidays, we'd make candies and things like that and give away. And then I found out after I started my business that my grandmother was actually a candy maker in Australia when she was there as a teenager. So it's in your jeans. It's in my jeans (laughs) and I had no idea. So, (laughs) 
<laughs> so yeah, so I think I was just destined to do what I'm doing. So right. So uh, the one thing that you guys are known about is you didn't invent the bourbon ball, but you invented maybe what's called the bourbon truffle. So kind of talk about that. Okay. So um, people have been infusing alcohol and chocolates for years. Uh, it's very popular in Europe to do so. Um, but what we have done here is we created a small batch bourbon truffle. And what makes that different than any other bourbon candy that's out there or an alcohol infused candy is that we're actually pairing the bourbons with chocolates. So the goal here is you taste the different nuances of that particular bourbon. And that's what makes our bourbon truffles different than any bourbon candy out there. We'll talk about the difference between bourbon balls and bourbon truffles because I don't think, I think you could probably go online, you could look at allrecipes.com and see all kinds of things for bourbon balls. But I mean, what's the difference between a, a bourbon ball and a bourbon truffle then? Okay, so a bourbon ball um, is usually um, illegal um, because of all the amount of alcohol <laughs> that, that most people put in yes. them. <laughs> Probably my grandmother's. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes them so good. Um, but then they're made with confectionery sugar, um, usually pecans, and it's turned into um, like almost a dough in the middle, and then you dip it in chocolate. Whereas a, a truffle is more along the lines of a European style chocolate. So the center of a truffle is chocolate, and then you infuse it with heavy fats. And that's what makes it a ganache. And then you hand roll them, or you form them, and you dip them in chocolate. So they're they're two different uh, they're two different beasts. So. So what do you think that makes like pairing bourbon and chocolate like maybe a harmonious marriage? Well, believe it or not, chocolate and bourbon are very similar in the way that they start out and the way that the processes they go through to get the final flavor profiles. Um, when you're making chocolate, the very beginning, it goes through a fermentation process, just like you would a mash bill for making bourbons, and it changes the flavors. Um, they're also, um, the beans are also roasted, and depending on how long you roast them depends on the flavors that you get from that. So they're actually very similar. Um, I think chocolate has over 650 different pl- flavor profiles. And bourbon, I'm sure, has, what, at least two or 300 that I know of that I've (laughs) heard of. (laughs) More and more coming out every day. So they're actually very, very similar. So when you put the two together, it's almost like they were meant to be that way. Because I think when people are even nosing or even tasting bourbon, one of the things they always, you know, they're like, oh, I smell caramel, chocolate, you you know, cinnamon. Exactly. And, And chocolate's one of those things that come up pretty often, right? Absolutely. I mean, you and you were talking about, uh, you know, the different, uh, I guess, different bourbons with the different truffles i mean you can definitely tell we just tried i had an eagle rare versus the wild turkey truffle and you can definitely see the characteristics of each whiskey in each truffle it's truly amazing <laughs> so talk first off about how many brands do you have here that you're you're making different truffles for well currently in the store we offer over 70 different uh, bourbon truffles so they're all been paired with a variety of different bourbons uh, we hit heaven hill products we hit um, beam and maker's mark angels envy um, even sazerac or buffalo trace products so so we offer quite a few different uh, different ones, and we even do flavored liqueurs, which I know are not bourbon because they've been modified, um, but we do some of the flavored bourbon liqueurs as well. Yeah, because I'm even looking here across the wall, and I see like Kentucky Pink Lemonade Truffle, right? So kind of talk about some of these other ones that, that aren't necessarily bourbon, and, and what are you doing differently that's that would make them kind of stand out versus bourbon or if if somebody is actually coming here and they're doing the bourbon trail they're like well i i want to try all the bourbons why well, i'm not going to worry about the, the the moonshine ones right but kind of talk about that well um as proud sponsors of the kentucky bourbon trail we're also proud sponsors of the craft trail and we really want people to go out and you know see what they're doing down there because right now not everybody has bourbon because it takes a little time to get it so they are coming out with moonshines and gins and vodkas and things like that so we're working with them to help sort of help letting people know when they're coming and looking for bourbons like oh you should go down and try this craft distillery mb Rowland, and these are the products they're making right now if you give them a few years which right now they're making bourbon but uh they weren't two years ago when we started working with them so we let them let people see this is this is what they're coming up with moonshine so it's a little different so they make a pink lemonade moonshine well we'll make a pink lemonade truffle and it gives someone a different experience because believe it or not not everybody's a bourbon fan yet what i know <laughs> so my goal is to, to me yeah. <laughs> my goal is to make everyone a bourbon fan and if it's through chocolate that's perfect but um but yeah so people are some doing some really cool things with moonshines um granted not all moonshines or pretty much all moonshines taste the same unless you start flavoring them so we turn them into cocktails in a way so you know moonshine sort of like the kentucky vodka 
And so that's what we're doing is turn them into cocktails and things. That's what we do in the truffles. Right. Yeah, because moonshine by itself is a little, a little tough. A little tough. <laughs> Unless you get <laughs> it off the still. We found that's that. right. Yeah, some of it's pretty good off the, the white dog or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. guess. So I guess a, a second part to this question is, are, what are you doing differently with the individual chocolates? Are, are, is it just the same recipe and you're just swapping out alcohol? Or is it is it is, is there something unique about any, every individual one? Well, every individual one is unique. Um, so... It depends on how much alcohol we put in it because of the proofs. We have to be really careful with the proofs as well because over 5%, uh, we have to stay below 5% volume for alcohol. Um, but uh, each one is different because let's say you have a maker's mark, which is a weeded bourbon. So it's going to be, tends to be a lot sweeter. But you have something like, um, let's see, like a, a Weller. Well, Weller's also weeded bourbon, t- tends to be sweet. But when you put a Weller in like a milk chocolate, it actually becomes too sweet. And then you don't taste any of the other flavors. And it also has a nice spice to it, but you lose that. But in the Maker's Mark, it brings out that caramel and vanilla and it actually brings out the wood notes that you'd find in a Maker's. So they are different, even though we use a milk chocolate for those, but the bourbons are so different that it comes through. Well, I need to be on a tasting panel, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating. (laughs) So, I mean, I guess, so how many different recipes are there for individual ones? Or is it kind of like, well, you got to collect the whole set and figure out which one you like Mm -hmm. the most? Well, when I'm creating a recipe, you know, I always have an idea thinking, okay, I've done it for so long now. So I think this is going to be the one that works for that. And I'm still surprised sometimes because it's not the way what you know that it comes out. So I sometimes I'll make it in two or three different chocolates with, you know, different recipes just to see. And then you know, which one does it really represent? And so sometimes it'll take me a one, it's one try, you know, a couple of days. And then sometimes I've worked on them for over a month or so just to make sure I get the right flavors. Awesome. Uh, So kind of talk about some of the, like, you know, I had the Eagle Rare, for instance, some of the differences with that recipe versus the the wild turkey recipe. Well, for the Eagle Rare, we use a, um, let's see, we use a 70% chocolate a 70 percent cocoa content for that chocolate and uh the reason why i use that one it eagle rare has a nice spice to it Mm -hmm. um the dark chocolate helps keep that spice but i always find and i know everyone's palates are different so i know that people disagree with me but i always found the eagle rare to be sort of come across almost like um, with a brandy finish because i get more of a grapey note to it a, a dark fruit flavor and so the dark chocolates go well with that whereas the wild turkey 101 not a lot of complexity itself in the bourbon, um, but you get a lot of spice and a lot of spice and you get a lot of, of a bite to it. Well, if you put that in a dark chocolate, you lose that that initial bite. And the spice for that one doesn't come through like it does the Eel Rare. So I went with a lighter chocolate. So I went with a milk chocolate for that one. Yeah, I like some of the names that you even have on here. I'm just reading some off the website here, like the signature black cherry bourbon truffle made with Jim Beam black cherry. You've got the devilishly good one <laughs> by, take a guess, Jim Beam black, right? Uh, well, that's actually Devil's Cut. Devil's, Devil's Cut. Say. Yeah. Sorry, there you go. <laughs> See, I'm already getting ahead of myself. Old Basil's, uh, Yellow Rose, the Fair Rose truffle. So, I mean, you got you got some some pretty cool like kind of names that you got going on with here as well. So, I mean, is there is there a huge difference when you're when you're looking at all these different bourbons? Uh, are you tasting them first and then thinking like, oh, okay, well, I could I could probably mix it, use like this type of recipe with it. Right. Well, um, first of all, I have to give credit to my husband for all the uh, clever names that we use <laughs> in the stores for our um, our chocolates. Uh, the marketing are, department. The, my marketing <laughs> department, my design guy, he does he does all of that kind of stuff. Um and, but I do have to approve him because sometimes he can go a little <laughs> a little inappropriate. So um, I just sort of have to <laughs> will him in a we little bit. Ask. I know. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot on the on the uh, floor, but we can't use. But um, anyway, so back to your original question, though. So as for the bourbon, I drink every bourbon that we use, and I drink tons of bourbons that we don't use. Um, but yes, I, when I'm drinking them, that's what I'm always thinking is. How could I use this one? How can I pair this chocolate? What what flavors am I getting versus what other people are getting? So I'm constantly working, I guess, in that way. So I can't really just sit down and drink a bourbon and enjoy it. I'm always working. Always thinking about always it. Always thinking about it. Yeah, a lot of R&D always going on, right? <laughs> constantly. Yeah, tons of notebooks with logs. <laughs> exactly. Well, and the thing is, with all these new bourbons that are coming out and everyone just producing more, it's like it's really nonstop because there's so many out there now that I haven't had before. I could say I pretty much had everything that, 
was out there. Well, I can't say that now. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get some new recipes going. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> so uh, talk about some of the taste differences. So if you if you weren't changing the chocolate and you just maybe swapped out the different kinds of bourbon in each one, do you think you would be able to tell a difference in, in the truffle at the end of it? Like, does, does the cooking process um, take away too much alcohol or flavor of the bourbon or is there something where you can make them with the same recipe and two different bourbons you could you could easily tell side by side like these are these taste like two different things um believe it or not you can actually tell you can tell the difference um we try not to you know i try not to use the same chocolates in a lot of them um but there are some truffles that we use the same chocolate um what we call a hybrid where we're mixing the chocolates but it's the ratios are the same but the truffle tastes completely different and that's uh, one thing i love to do is because a lot of people are sort of like oh they're not going to taste different but it's sort of like when you have a flight of bourbons they're all going to taste different in different you know in certain ways and so i teach i do classes where i will do flights of bourbon truffles and i will have two darks and two milks or something like that so people can see wow that was in a dark chocolate and that was in a dark chocolate but they taste nothing alike and it's not necessarily about the taste either it's about the mouthfeel how does it hit you in the, you know, where does it hit you on the tongue? How is the finish? Um, it, so it's it's a completely different experience, not just about flavor. Mm-hmm. All right. I hate to do this to you, but you, if you had to pick one, which one's your favorite? Your baby. This is not even fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to say very brand neutral. Um, <laughs> oh, well, never mind that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's phrase this a little bit differently. So we'll take out, because you can, by the way, we'll, we'll talk, we'll give it a little bit plug at the end, but you can pick up uh, these art eatables, these these bourbon truffles at almost every distillery uh, on the trail. But let's take that out of the equation, and we'll say here at your retail shop, what's the most popular bourbon truffle that's sold? Okay, so when people are coming in, um, and let's say they don't really know much about bourbon, because we get a lot of people like that still. So the most popular ones are going to be Maker's Mark and Woodford, because those are brands they've least heard of, or they know someone that drinks it, okay? But when we have people that come in, they know their bourbon, they like their bourbon. Um, Something like the Weller 107 will be very popular, Blanton's, um, Angel's Envy, Um, and believe it or not, like Evan Williams, Single Barrel Vintage, is very popular and one that I um, push because I'm sort of saying it. It's one of my, it is sort of one of my favorites. I just, <laughs> I think it's a, it's just well balanced. It's uh, robust, has sweetness, has spices, pretty much has everything. And that's the Michter's small batch bourbon awesome. and the small batch bourbon truffle. Awesome. So with, with all these, are you using just kind of regular stuff that we can find on the shelves? Or are you thinking like, I'm going to get into limited edition chocolates right and making things with stuff that's or does like, that even matter or do you you know yeah. when you're making does it matter the quality of the whiskey versus because edward lee said if you were going to use you know a for a for a dessert you would use like a cheap kind of whiskey but if you're using it for an entree you'd use like a you know a higher end something type, a something higher age product higher age product yeah, yeah so does it matter i guess and within chocolate cooking well from the truffle aspect we will buy things just right off the shelf like everyone else. Um, for the most part, I mean, we do things like Old Crow, but most people aren't really drinking Old Crow. And, I mean, and it, it tastes it tastes fine in chocolate. It just doesn't have – it doesn't have enough wow for me or enough complexity. You know, that's – and that's where we sort of get into it is the ones that we offer on in the store are ones that – they really make an impact. Granted, we'll make something with everything if they if people want it. You know, it's that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the store, most of the items that you're going to find are, are bourbons that you can pick up on the shelf, you know, the shelf of your local liquor store. And that's the reason is because when people come in here, our goal is for them to buy the bourbon truffles. Yes, we want them to do that. But then we also want them to go find that bourbon and drink it at home too. So we're really cross-promoting bourbon. It's all about bourbon, really, and chocolate's just the way we get it to people. I guess so. that's a, a kind of a good way to think about it is uh, once they buy a box, and maybe they buy a box because you've got Willet truffles, wild turkey, I even saw, I see uh, old granddad truffles up there. Is that is that a way to be able to say, like, you should maybe try to drink this, like, as you're eating it? Or is this, or are you kind of going for, like, oh, just have a truffle whenever you're, you, you know, you feel like you lost a pound, right? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> well, I guess you can look at it either way. But yeah. um, um, now some of the truffles are, you can actually drink with the truffle and it enhances the experience. But then sometimes if you're drinking a bourbon like a, the Booker's and you're having it with the truffle, it can overpower the bourbon that's in the chocolate because it's such a high proof. You know, it's that kind right. of thing. Um, but we also, one of the things I was going to talk about is we do private barrels 
And you'd be surprised the difference of our regular bourbons that we buy in the truffles than when we do a private barrel pairing in the chocolates. And they do taste completely different, just like any barrel right, pick yeah. that you would get. It doesn't taste anything like the ones you find on the store. So talk so. about how much. So say I say I, I picked a private barrel. I know I know Ryan's talked about it plenty of times. He's picked private barrels, and he, too. and he says, it's fun. and he yeah. says, I want to I want to make a few chocolates out of my private barrel, and I would I would like you to do it. How much bourbon do you need to be able to say I'm going to do a run for you, or of how many ever? And how you're much money? <laughs> <laughs> well, usually if you supply me the bourbon, I won't charge you a, a a production, you know, like a fee to come up with the pairing. Um, we actually work with a lot of different groups that go in together and buy bourbons, uh, buy barrels, and they'll come to us at the holidays, and that's what they use for their Christmas gifts. Um, so, like this, go, past, <laughs> this past year, we had a private barrel of Weller 107, and um, I think we ended up making almost 100, 150 boxes, something like that, eight and 16-piece boxes, and it only took about two, two and a half bottles worth of the, you know, the just the small Right. So I'm definitely really, giving you one of my four yeah, roses. It doesn't, it barrel really doesn't, picks. It doesn't really. Because I got a couple sitting around. Really? What kind <laughs> yeah. do you have? Well, I have an OESK. I'm not giving you that one. But uh, <laughs> OESF, it's good. But I got much more bottles of those. So the OESK was a small barrel. only had like 30 bottles in it. And the oh, other wow. had over you know 200 or whatever so i got more of those sitting around well yeah i mean and then think thing is too i'll give you back the bottles i'll give you the ones we don't use we okay. don't keep them so Perfect. <laughs> just Perfect. enough for the recipes that's well, maybe all i, I need. can trade a bottle for <laughs> no, there you go. There. <laughs> i'm sure we can work something out <laughs> cool so talk about more about uh the shop because you're not you're not doing only bourbon truffles right so kind of talk about some of the other products that you are selling here okay so our main focus of course are bourbon truffles but um you know not everybody's a big fan of bourbon yet um so and i do have a nine-year-old son and and uh, it's not really cool if your mom is a chocolatier <laughs> if you can't really eat anything that she makes. So we do have an area we call the no fun zone. So I develop chocolate. Like we have chocolate Oreos and we do Majesca. It looks the most fun to me, though. <laughs> chocolate Oreos look killer. Yeah, we always tell people the, the no fun zones in the middle and the parties on the sides because <laughs> everything on the walls have alcohol in them. So um, but yeah, we do like Majesca's, but we don't do traditional Majesca's. We always had to put our spin on things. So we do uh, bourbon smoked sea salt on it. So it's sweet and salty and chewy. It goes great with coffee and it also goes great with bourbon believe it or not um and then we'll do caramels but those all have alcohol in it but the caramel we have to cook at such a high temperature so it cooks out um but we'll do like that's where a lot of liqueurs come in so like evan williams they have a whole line of liqueurs like honey and cherry and cinnamon um and so we'll turn those into caramels um uh, there's peach and there's orange and there's a bourbon smoked sea salt caramel which is you know if for something like that that sounds we're incredible just, <laughs> i'll have to get you some before you leave but uh some now that's one thing about the caramels like the bourbon in that one because it does cook out i will use an inexpensive bourbon for that one that makes sense because it at that point you're not really tasting the alcohol it's not about a pairing you're just using it as an ingredient at that point so there's one thing i we did forget to bring up about the truffles and that is when i've i've had i've had a lot of these truffles i, I remember the first truffle that i had was at the bourbon affair in 2015 so it was this past it was not this past year it was the year before there and it was we were in the cave and they had they had all these truffles at all these different tables and me and my wife went i mean we went crazy we were just eating them all up <laughs> and then we come to bourbon affair this year we're doing the same exact thing and now when i take my wife and i i make her go mule uh whiskey for me at some of these other places <laughs> i go we we end up buying another box of it so uh we love it but there's one thing that's that's makes it very unique about all these and it's kind of like your signature which you guys call the bit so kind of talk about what that is and kind of what it is, because uh, it's an abbreviation for something as well. Right. So the BIT is what we call it. It's uh, It stands for the Brand Identification Token. And the way we looked at it is because we use so many different bourbons, there's got to be a way to identify the bourbons that are easy for the customer, but easy for us to identify what we're doing. You know, there's only so many drizzles and paint colors that you can do. And, you know, we're nut free shops, so we're not going to put pecans on our on our chocolate. So um, my husband and I had this idea way before we got actually started as a, a real business. Um, or before we opened up our store, I guess, is how do we how do we make our products look different than any other bourbon candy that's out there or any other candy? Um, you know, because we're trying to build a brand. We're not just making bourbon chocolates. And so um, we had this idea to basically put a logo on top of our chocolates. And that was a way to identify 
the bourbon that was in it, but it was also to identify our product. So if someone saw it across the room and they saw these little colored disc or chocolates or something on, you know, these little color pieces on some on a piece of chocolate, they would know that was Art Eatables. And so um, we got to really use it and sort of hit it home and let people know that, that our products were different is when Maker's Mark picked us up as a client. Um, if you find the Maker's Mark truffle versus the bourbon ball, the bourbon ball has the pecan on it, where as the bourbon truffle has their logo. We use the SIV logo on top of every bourbon truffle that we make for them. Cool. And so that allows us to, to use the different bits in our store for the brands. But once we have a branded product with a certain company or spirit company, it allows them to put their logo on that too. So when people see it, they know the difference between an Angel's Envy truffle versus an Evan Williams or a Maker's Mark or a Jim Beam. So it's our trademark look. That's We've been doing that since we got started. In every product that we develop, if it has bourbon in it or moonshine, it has a bit on top of it. That's cool. Well, it actually is pretty cool because I remember when we were at Bourbon Affair and we would come around. Actually, we made we made laps, right? And, and so <laughs> I did see you several times. Yeah, and so she would she would have out this this kind of uh, silver Can't plate. Even second, thirds before people got first. <laughs> yeah, well, we just take a handful, right? It's like yeah. it's like going for like a thing of popcorn. Um, so you, you would go through and you'd have a plate and they have all these truffles on them. They'd have it would be all one. It'd be like uh, you know. Uh, Yellowstone, right? And then we'd wait around 15 minutes and make another lap, and there'd be a different one out there. It would be Willett, or it'd be Evan Williams, or whatever it was. So yeah, I mean, it was it was really cool. It's definitely see that it's a a very unique thing you put onto it, and it's very much a brand recognition thing. Very and, much. And I think uh, another cool thing that you should talk about as well is that um, this isn't just the chocolate factory, right? I guess the, everything's handmade, right? And I, I guess kind of talk about the process that that you kind of go through and and what it means to kind of uh, you know be local owner. And, and kind of build this, you know, from the ground up and, and have everything not done by um, automation at this point, right? Right. Right now, everything is handmade. It's been that way since we started. We have we have some processes that allow us to make larger batches, but we're still not making two or three thousand at a time. You know, we're I think the most I can make at one time for a batch is, you know, 200 truffles. That's not that many. Um, and how but, long does that take? Um, it probably takes me, well, time I make the batch, and then I do have some molds that help me now, but um, it still takes me about 20, 30 minutes just to make the ganache center for the truffles. And then you have to hand, you know, then you have to dip them or enrobe them, and all the bits on top are all handmade pieces of chocolate. So it takes, you know, it could take a whole. I have people that just make bits all day. That's all they do <laughs> because <laughs> they take so long. But, um, but that's the part I think that people, you know, um, people appreciate you know i know our chocolates are you know they're a little bit more expensive than a bourbon ball because there's more that goes into it um but so much better i I have to agree (laughs) i think so too but um (laughs) but i think people appreciate that when they come into our store it's so small and quaint you know the owners are here my husband and i work here seven days a week so he will always see us we're always here you know we have a small staff and um i mean eventually i would like to have some automated not necessarily automated, but some machines to help speed it up um, because we are bringing on new clients every day and you can only hand make so many truffles, um, but we still have a hand in everything. Like I want to have a hand in everything we do. We might have a process that, um, you know, where we have an enrober where it helps maybe coat a few extra chocolates instead of just hand dipping one individual. We might be able to do 30 at one time. But that's still a very small process, very handmade process when you compare it to like a diva and things like that or just pumping out, you know, hundreds of thousands of truffles per second, per, per second. second. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I watch those how it's made and I'm just like in awe. <laughs> but then I'm like, well, you know, you sort of lose something because at that point you're just a, you're just a even though you're a manufacturer, you're just you're just an everyday chocolate that is mass produced and there's nothing really special about it. Yeah, so. it makes me think of it, when we were at Heaven Hill and, you know, you had the. The automated process, you know, with all the Evan Williams and everything, but then you they had that small table where they're still hand dipping like their uh, small batches and their the single Henry, barrels Henry and Henry McKenna's, Henry McKenna's Evan Williams single barrels, Elijah Craig's or whatever. So to keep that kind of handcrafted sense of it, it makes you appreciate that even more. Yeah, and Maker's Mark, they still hand, they still put the labels on them by hand. I think most people do four roses, so there's still people involved. You know, um, I you just have to when you're scaling up, you do have to have some automation, but 
the the goal is to always have hands involved. We want to create jobs. We don't want to just buy machines. For sure. You know? So. Absolutely. So uh, another question for you is, um, you know, how can you get these, right? Because I, I'm looking at the packages and I, I see that you have four packs, eight packs, and they all have their individual brands in each one, right? Right. So kind of talk about, is there an idea that if I come in and I'm like, well, I, I'd love to buy every single one and every single package, uh, but I'd love to just try one of each. Like, can I get like a, a pack of eighty and every, you know have an individual <laughs> one? Of that every would take single... me forever to make, but uh, <laughs> to put together. But okay, so let's say you're walking into the store, and um, we, how we usually walk people through is we, you know, we'll tell them that. Uh, Along the wall here, you know, you'll see that we have over 35 different bourbons. And if you see the bottle by the side of the chocolate, that's what bourbon is in there. So Don't drink the bottle. Right, exactly, because <laughs> it's just colored water in here. But um, <laughs> I learned out the hard way when I got walked in. <laughs> yeah, very disappointing. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so you can pick up a four-piece box or an eight-piece of just a single flavor. You know, and there's there, the single flavors are great because people are very brand loyal, you know, um, or... They're very stuck on, hey, I only like dark chocolate. I want something mild. Well, let me gear you this way. Um, but um, then we can go on to like a sampler pack. So the only samplers that we have right now are a uh, one. It's called um, it's called the Taste of the Trail, and it represents truffles along the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. You know, being sponsors of the Bourbon Trail. Actually, we're the first sponsor ever besides the distillery. And a lot of people don't know that. And it's like, wow, you're just a candy shop. No, not really. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we offer that. And so it's basically a flight. So that's what you're buying in a collection is a flight. So when you come into the store, we'll do fours, eights, sixteens. We can even do up to 32 pieces in a box. Um, and you can pick, you know, for custom orders, for anything over four pieces or four different bourbons, you just have to call ahead, you know, make sure we have them on hand and stuff like that. But yeah, you can you can pretty much customize however you want it. Well, cool. So I guess before we start wrapping this, this up, uh, tell people how they can find you and where can they buy the chocolates? Okay. Well, if you want to come to the store and experience uh, experience it here, uh, you can reach um, come to the store at 631 South 4th Street um, in Louisville, Kentucky. We're between the Brown Hotel and the Palace Theater. Um, we've been here. This is our fourth year. Or um, if you're really far away, but you want some bourbon chocolates, um, you can find us online at arteatables.com. Uh, we have a web store. We actually offer more on our web store than we do in our store because there's more space there than there is here. Um, and we're actually uh, updating our website, so we'll have even more products on there. So um, just check back in the, in the fall if you want to. And then also, if you're along the Bourbon Trail, um, you can pick, a, pick up our products at Town Branch, Wild Turkey, Maker's Mark, uh, Heaven Hill, Evan Williams, Peerless, um, Will It, Will much it anywhere. <laughs> Jim Beam. Yeah, I think there's only like two that were not. So, yeah, so if you're just along What's the trail. Wrong with them? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I figured. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> <Three off. laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you again for so much coming on the show today. It was a pleasure uh, not only coming here, but uh, because this is my first time being at the shop. Walked walked yeah. by it plenty of times, been in a few restaurants around here. But first time actually coming in the shop today, and we've ha- I've had the chocolates lots and lots of times. And they're okay. by far, it's it, it knocks the socks off of any, uh, you know, bourbon candy that, that's out there, right? So I love these bourbon truffles, so you just got to keep pumping them out. Well, thank you. I, people like you, you know, talking about them, that's the reason why we're still in business and doing so well. So I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, they were great. Sorry, Grandma, but uh, <laughs> they, were, they were pretty tasty. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, it is, it's a cool shop. I mean, if you're ending the bourbon trail, you're staying in Louisville, I definitely would check out, you know, the shop and come in here. It's a cool place. You got lots of good stuff. And if you want some good d- desserts, the no fun zone, I'm all about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> So if you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes. You can follow us on all those great social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe or actually sponsor us on Patreon. We we love your pledges, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. We're going to be giving bottles away, I think, here in our sixth month. I picked up a four-year Willet. I think that's going to be our, our six-month giveaway. So it's, that's going to be a good incentive to uh, get more people involved. Yeah, definitely donate. The prizes are, or the giveaways are just getting better and better each month. Uh, I thought the last one, have we sent it out the poster yet? Yeah, we sent it out this week. That's, that was one of my favorite. I think I even got one for myself. I thought that was a cool piece of art. But uh, yeah, definitely support us. We really appreciate it and hope you're enjoying the samples for those who got it. But uh, 
We appreciate you all listening. And if you have any show suggestions, feedback, or comments, just let us know. And uh, we'll see you next time. This podcast of Bourbon Pursuit is in partnership with thewhiskeywash.com, a lifestyle website for news and reviews for people who like whiskey. And for those who think a life without whiskey has no style, thewhiskeywash.com. Okay. Just keep going. Like, okay. even if we record for an hour, that's fine. We okay. can cut out anything that we think is boring afterwards. Okay. Right? <laughs> Watch, we'll come back and listen to it and be like, wow, that was a five-minute interview. How did that happen? <laughs>